Hello folks, how y'all doing today? Just sitting here in the dock waiting to get loaded. Thought I'd do this little video here. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the freight markets, what's going on? And uh, as some of you know, a couple weeks ago I had a gentleman on from Freight Connect named Paul, and I'm hoping to do an update video on that really soon. I've been, I, I put them to work to find me some direct shipper customer freight, and they are uh, outperforming their promises to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite satisfied, but I don't wanna give away everything. Uh, I'm gonna get him on. We'll talk about it. Talk about exactly what they did for me. And uh, I'm, spoiler alert, I'm I'm quite satisfied. But mostly today, I wanted to talk about kind of what's happening so far for for January. You know, the end of January there, and so far in February. Uh, I did notice kind of the last couple of weeks of January there, things were falling off, starting to fall off pretty good. Still, still not bad though. Uh, but now here this first week of February I'm seeing uh, things are looking kind of busy for the for the lanes I'm in again right now uh, it's hard to tell this is a hard one to figure out but overall I think we're hanging in there pretty good for the first quarter uh, better than I would have expected could it all come tumbling down tomorrow <laughs> who knows world's freaking crazy and on fire but mostly what I want to talk about today is the maritime freight volumes the shipping volumes on, on cargo ships because I got this email here talking about, and I'm gonna read you a little bit from it, so that's why I'm looking down here. Talking about the record backlogs at the Southern California ports. Now, some of this is due to the COVID restrictions uh, here and in China, being able to load and unload ships and then having the room for it and the container availability. Multiple reasons for these backlogs. And plus the volume is high. The ocean volumes are super high right now, but they just set a record for number of shit number of ships set at anchor in the Southern California ports uh, on Wednesday January 27th the the San Pedro Bay port complex had set a new record with 55 ships at anchor now that does that's just the ones at anchor that does not include the ones in port being unloaded and later to that day they broke the record with 60 uh, container ships at anchor now at that time when you put them together with the ones that were already in port, there was 110 ships in port there waiting to unload. And they're saying some of them are having to wait weeks to, to get unloaded. And more container ships are, are arriving every day. They just don't know what to do with them. I'm gonna show you a, a, a map of it here in a second where they got all these things uh, anchored offshore. It says here, the number of ships waiting in space in ports is creating a new set of challenges for the managers of the region. According to the primary anchorage spots, they've begun to use and fill 10 contingency anchorages near Huntington Beach, California. Yesterday, the Marine Exchange reported that for the first time since 2004, it has begun placing ships in drift boxes outside the anchorage. Three vessels have been placed in these spaces where they remain underway at slow speed, in effect circling in a defined area. That means they've even run out of drift boxes. That's where they set them offshore to anchor them. They're running out of spaces there because they're creating traffic jams and having to put them farther and farther away to keep the lanes open to come in and out. It's, it's just crazy. It says they're moving ships from drift to anchor in the order they arrive if the open anchorage is suitable for their length and the draft. It means they can't get these big ships into some of the smaller spots. Now, take a look at this picture here. I'm gonna show you. You got red, red dots, green dots, blue dots, all and purple dots all based on the size of the ships let me see if I can make that a little bigger that is a hundred and ten ships hanging out in that tiny little bay waiting to get unloaded and now apparently uh, people are getting upset because as fast as they can get these containers unloaded they're bringing them back back empty to put them back on the ships to go back to China empty rather than taking the time to uh, reload them with goods from the US. So people, you know, agricultural companies in the US are getting upset because they're not getting it, being able to get their product shipped out because they need these containers back so fast in China. There's a, there's a desperate shortage of containers uh, for getting goods here from China. There's way more. So, I mean, what does that mean to all of us? There's freight. We, <laughs> they just can't get it off the ship. Uh, if they start unloading this and picking up that process, rates out in California are gonna boom again. 
is some of this cheap Chinese crap freight? Yeah, not all of it. And the rates are gonna go up because they're not gonna have, when all this hits, they're not gonna have the trucks to move it. So there's positivity there. Uh, they're saying it could slow down around the Chinese New Year, which is in mid to late February. But now they're saying if they can get the containers, they're gonna keep running for the Chinese New Year, which to my recollection has never happened before. Maybe it has, I just don't know about it. I wouldn't doubt it. But now they're saying even if there is a lull, they're gonna use that lull to try to reduce the backlog, but then they have a full schedule lined up again after the Chinese New Year to be coming back in. So it's just gonna happen all over again. And apparently other ports around the country are experiencing the same thing. So I know we have, you know, freight is slowing down a little bit, but don't get discouraged by it. The freight is there, we just gotta get it. We gotta, you know, get to it. And they have to get it to us. So all in all, first quarter, so far, not not terrible. I mean, it's better than, than a lot of other first quarters I've gone through. So stay tuned. We're gonna get Paul from Freight Connect to come back on and uh, talk a little bit about more of that process. And uh, I'll talk about some of the different things that, that I went through uh, with the process. And maybe we can get him more into this, uh, this shipping uh, situation here and talk about uh, the Baltic Dry Index and shipping indexes in general. Uh, I've heard from some people they wanna hear more about that. So stay tuned, check out all the links in the description below, and we will see you next time.